Hey guys, Starship here doing another replay cast slash analysis. Uh, I haven't really had a lot of time. I'm trying to get it once a week. This is a bit delayed, but uh, I'm trying to get better. Uh, probably there won't be much during the holidays, but afterwards I'll, I'll try to do some extra stuff and get out even more casts. Maybe uh, analyze a whole best of three or best of five, something like that. But this game is uh, from the quarterfinals of uh, the most recent Garrick Cup, Garrick Cup 89, I believe. One of the quarterfinals between Rudan, aka Mali Meda, and Shaddai, aka Machiavelli. Uh, Rudan, we haven't really seen him. Uh, one of the reasons I, I chose this replay is because we haven't really seen Rudan at all. I heard, I mean, he's been playing, in, he, he was in the Chinese tournament, one of the, the lands there he qualified for, but we haven't really seen him in the Gare Cups. I believe he's he might be playing a lot on Eddie's, I'm not really sure. I mean, I suspect he is since he's, he did so well in this cup. I don't want to spoil the results for anyone who hasn't seen it, but he did really well. So I imagine he's probably playing a lot on the Chinese server instead of W3 Arena. Uh, but it's nice to see him back because uh, all of this, uh, there's been so much happy dominance in the, the Gara Cups and, and the ladder and everything. So seeing Runan is, is a breath of fresh air because he's probably one of the best uh, Night Elf against Undead players. Uh, Probably in the world, I would say, but definitely in Europe at least. He has a very confident style. Uh, a lot of Naga second from him. So we'll see how he kind of manages with Shaddai, uh, who is a very good player. I mean, obviously he's not on the same level as Happy, but still a very strong player. I mean, he made it to the quarterfinals, and he's made it pretty far in the past as well. So definitely a challenging opponent. Uh, but uh, one thing that makes this game so interesting, if we just pause real quick, is the way Shaddai is playing this is... He's doing a one ziggurat tech. So it's pretty much the fastest possible tech. He forgoes the shop. He doesn't bring any ghouls with him because he techs so fast, so he pretty much needs these to be on wood for the entire tech if he wants to be able to build anything once he reaches tier 2. So his entire harass here consists of one level 1 death knight with unholy aura. No rod, no ghouls, nothing. Which is very unusual. I mean, most undead players will rush with ghouls quite a bit early on. They'll try to put on as much pressure as possible. Uh, force the Night Elf to lose archers, to lose wisps, to use moon juice, and all that stuff, just to try to get it, get an advantage and then seal the deal later on. But Jedi is kind of doing the opposite, just being annoying. I think it's quite clever on this map because the Night Elf really has limited creeping options. I mean, the only thing you can realistically ancient war creep uh, against undead is this little green camp. You certainly can't go for this uh, golem; it takes way too long. You could possibly go for the shop here, but if it gets detected, you're just probably going to lose to a rush anyway. So. Shaddai knows this, and he's, I think, reacting to it by getting a really super fast tech, knowing that the Demon Hunter isn't really going to get level 3 anytime soon anyway, so perhaps this is a wise move. But Rudan, I think he's also playing this smart, he's very confident. He, he kind of realizes, I mean, he gets a feeling that, okay, there's just this Death Knight, there's no Rod, so I'm probably pretty safe to just creep right in front of this, and there's no Death Call, there's nothing, I just need to make sure I get level 2, which is a critical level, really, you want to be able to get Immolation if you really need to against Ghoul Rushes. But also, interestingly enough, uh, what makes Rudan do feel so confident here is his wisp placement, if we just check real quick. While this is going on, I mean, he has the perfect wisp placement. One here, one here, one here. Especially before it turned night. When it was daytime, he had pretty much full vision. So if any ghouls were going to show up, like if Shaddai would bring like 10 ghouls and do an all-in or whatever, he would see, Rudan would see those coming no matter where they came from. If, because of the, how narrow the map is, so that's one reason why he's so confidently creeping right now and in the face of the de uh, Death Knight, because he knows there's nothing coming. And if there is, he has time to react by getting a second Ancient War, stuff like that. <clears throat> Did get level 2 on the Demon Hunter. Claws is really good, and Intelligence isn't that good, but if he goes for Naga, that's, uh, that's a good item. Death Knight's still being annoying, but at this point, like, when it, when the Death Knight's so low, you can't really harass anymore, like, Rudan doesn't really care at all. He did use a Mana Burn, so he did reveal that he picked Mana Burn, but obviously since he's level 2, you're going to pick Mana Burn anyway, so you might as well pick it and use it. And I wonder if he saved his... no, he picked Evasion as well, so he's confident that there's no Ghoul Rush coming. Since it would be very, very delayed if, if, uh, if there was one. An instant tier 3, that's like 4 minutes and 33 seconds that we have a tier 3 going for Shaddai, so his entire game plan here is just super, super, super fast tier 3, a lot of frenzy ghouls, try to end the game fast. 
Uh, I like that strategy, I think it's cool. Uh, but if you don't harass at all, like, there's no aggression from Shaddai, so... I feel like this kind of puts uh, the game in Rudan's hands, like... Shaddai is just going as fast as he can to a certain point in the game, and then he's going to try to attack and win. And there's no real way he can affect what Rudan is doing, except for that tiny Death Knight harass early on, like... It feels like a really, really fast tech, and then kind of hope, crossing your fingers and hoping that your opponent can't deal with it, because you're not really affecting the game at all, uh, from Shaddai's perspective. But we do see the Naga second here from Rudan. It's kind of trademark against Undead. A lot of Nidals will get Naga second if the Undead gets Naga second, but uh, Rudan kind of gets Naga second just anyway, always, pretty much. Not always, I shouldn't say always, but very often. It's a strong hero's choice. I mean, a level 1 Naga is a lot more impactful than a level 1 Panda. And in such a kind of rush-heavy game, as Rudan probably suspects that it is, because there's been no aggression, so he probably feels like there's a really fast tech behind it. In that situation, you're never going to get a level 3 Panda in time, so getting a level 1 or 2 Naga is a lot better, I would say, than having a level 1 or 2 Panda. <clears throat> Do see a couple of Fiends coming out here for Shy, which is pretty standard. I mean, you have a lot of Frenzy Ghouls, and then you kind of start making Fiends, and if the game goes on, you kind of switch to Fiends and stop making Ghouls, and then it'll be the standard kind of Fiend uh, Destroyer statue, maybe some Abominations. We get the critical level 3 Death Knight, which again, this is one of the issues with doing like a pure tech build where you're not really doing anything to your opponent, is that you can't really stop the level 1 hero from getting level 3. That level 2 mana burn is a big difference in this game, in any game really. Like if you get a Team Hunter level 3 with good items, it'll help you in any situation imaginable really. But yeah, we do see the huge tech difference here. Not even halfway to tier 3 from Rudan. And he has to get like all the upgrades, and he needs a boss magic, he needs to get uh, level 1 and level 2 bear training. And he needs to get bears out, so... It's quite a vulnerable kind of timing push for Rudan if Shaddai can pull it off. But it's also, a th I think, a very thin line, like if Rudan does get the bears out, if he does get uh, a solid army and a comfortable army, then this kind of super fast tech isn't the best because like look at the hero levels for Shaddai. Level 2, level 1 doesn't have a lot going for him except for the fact that he has a sick tech and an insane army with the frenzy here and the orb. <clears throat> so he's going to be relying mostly on this and I would call this an all-in almost like he pretty much has to win with this push or do a lot of damage. And we'll see if he's able to do that. I mean, there's no Master Bears yet, so the timing is really good. Uh, this might be a mistake, trying to creep. Yeah, there's 100 mana burn, so sick. <clears throat> this kind of delays the timing attack. I mean, it's like, what are you going to get out of this? You could get a really good item. If you solo creep the Death Knight, you could get level 3. But, uh, I would say it's a lot more important to just try and attack before Master Bears, before anything scary comes out. This pretty much just gives Rudan time to get out the army he needs to defend. Oh, should I actually got the kill, I believe. No, no, he didn't. Rudan did. Nice TP, nice just buying time. It's perfectly fine to do right now. Master Bears has started. 40 food for Rudan. 42 for Shaddai, and a Sacrificial Pit. Interesting choice. We, I mean, Tinker 3rd makes it look like even more of an all-in, like you just want to end the game. But the Sacrificial Pit there makes it look like he's, he wants to go for Worms. <clears throat> but yeah, here we go. There's no Destroyer in the air, there's no counter to Rejuvenation, uh, although we don't really see one out yet. Should be focusing down this bear before it can morph, but yeah, now Master Bear is ready. At this point, it's looking quite grim for Shaddai, I would say. Missed the timing. Has worse heroes, worse army. I like the Tinker, but uh, the question is how, how much late game potential he has if the game goes on. Ah, 
perfect slime flavor for the timing. <clears throat> yeah, we do see the boneyard here, so it will be worms. The question is if this is a reaction, like he might have put down the sacrificial pit, assuming that his push wouldn't work, and he just wanted to have a backup plan, assuming the worst. But it still feels like, I mean, food-wise, he's far behind. 20 food behind, almost. Hero-wise, he's behind. Tech-wise, he's behind. Everything's kind of looking bad for him right now. Uh, but one reason this is also difficult, I mean, look at the map. Look at the choke here. If you're having a lot, if you have a lot of ghouls, one reason to, to creep the shop is to just kind of stop the Nidal from being able to maybe send a dry attack the creeps once and pull them to your army. You get ensnared. They can do the same thing with these creeps, although there's no ensnare. Uh, but once you're actually here, look at the ancient war. When it's placed about here, the Nidal's base is right behind with moonwalls. There are ancients that can hit, hit you as well, so it's kind of a difficult map to all in anyway. I mean, the, there are pros and cons to it. The, the creeping early on is a big pro, but the tight spaces and the kind of easy ability for Night Elf to get a good position is the biggest con, I would say. <clears throat> a lot of fiends going down. Looking quite difficult here. For should I to do really anything? First destroyer out. It's a very, very late destroyer. I mean, a lot of times when undeads do that kind of super fast all in style, they at least get one destroyer just to absorb rejuvenation. Because if you can't absorb re rejuvenation, then the demon hunter is just infinitely uh, efficient. They actually cancelled the boneyard, interestingly enough. Brunan's just kind of in, in, in the face of Shaddai, attacking buildings when Shaddai is attacking his army. It's kind of the, the most confident you can get, I guess, is attacking a sacrificial pit while the undead is attacking your army. But this does kind of show the almost invincibility of the undead base. Like, Shaddai is at 38 food, Brunan's banking at 50. He'll probably break fairly soon. It looks like he just wants to try and end it, but... There's no there's no army you can have really that can deal with the undead base at any point in the game. Like the only only way Rudan could lose this game is if he uh, suicides in and loses everything. <clears throat> but probably that won't happen. But it is a trap. It's like it's probably the, at least the most common trap for me is just you feel like you're so far ahead you want to end the game so you attack the undead base and then you somehow lose because you have the black citadel and the, and the blight. And all that stuff. Oh, nice. Double four for Rudan. Very, very strong heroes here. And the Naga scales quite well as well. Like, really strong, strong hero to choose. I mean, some people, like I said, will pick it as a reaction to the undead picking Naga, and then you kind of sometimes feel like, in the late game, she's not as good as a panda. But, I don't know, I think like a level 4 Naga, level 5 Naga is very, very strong. Not as strong as a level 5 panda, but both her spells are useful. Uh, Fork Lightning is really strong, her Cold Arrow is really strong, so you never really feel like you're wasting a high-level a high level hero when picking the Naga. It's not like picking like a Keeper of the Grove, where... If, if this was a level 4 Keeper of the Grove, he'd be completely useless because there's no spell he can use at all to help Rudan. But the Naga's always strong, always good, so... I kind of like that. I like seeing the Naga as kind of more of a standard choice than a, a reactionary choice. <clears throat> Although it does require very good control. It's a very easy hero to get sniped. Yeah, Rudan's just keeping up this aggression, constant aggression. He wants to end the game. Almost foolhardily running in here everything he's got. You almost get a little bit worried for him. I mean, there are two destroyers out now. I don't know if the staff is on cooldown. They might lose two bears here. Yeah, two bears lost for really nothing at all. I mean, at this point, Shaddai is almost catching up food-wise. I mean, he's, he's 10 food behind before he was 20. Biggest issue is still the heroes, like 
very, very little experience gained from Shadai during this game. It's still level 2 Death Knight, still only level 1 Lich and level 1 Tinker. I think this is the reason why Rudan feels so confident just keeping on pushing because there's no real threat from the heroes. Now he's even creeping right in front of Shaddai. Oh my god. I'd love to see Nature's Blessing research and just get a couple of Ancient Wars in there as well, but here we go. A lot of Dryads out now. Frost Armor picked at level 1. I didn't even realize that. That's a very interesting choice. Guess it makes sense for like an all-in push, but the more the game drags on, this is just uh, yeah, it's looking really, really bad. So this is the point in the game where you can actually push in as Night Elf. It takes this much, but at some point you might be able to topple down the undead base. But even now, it's still I'd still be a bit scared in the Night Elf shoes. Just if you manage to lose your death knight somehow or something, you might just end up in a bad spot. Rudan's just going for it. Let's just down. The orb was not passed to the Death Knight, so pretty much all the DPS is gone now. And the Death Knight's down. GG should die. So quite a short game, but I liked it. I like that Rudan's back. I, I like that this game was kind of different with the super fast tech. I think it has a lot of potential from the undead. It's very like how Hate Love Angle would play it, except even less aggressive and even faster tech. But I think the big difference, like the deciding moments, really was the uh, trying to creep the shop. And not having a single destroyer for the push, it seemed like a strange choice. Maybe he just forgot it. But, uh, yeah. As soon as a, a push like this doesn't work, the game will always look very one-sided. Like, if you just look at stats, it looks like, oh my god, Rudan just dominated Shaddai. But I don't think it was as one-sided as this, the stats make it look. It could have actually worked if uh, it just didn't creep the expansion, I think. I uh, creeped the shop, excuse me. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. It wasn't a, the, the longest game, uh, but like I said, I'll try to have more uh, in the future, probably after the holidays. Uh, I'll, I want to try to do maybe like a, a best of uh, five analysis from the finals of the Gara Cup, which is between uh, Rudan and Happy, uh, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. So yeah, for now, uh, I wish you uh, happy holidays and a good game and goodbye.